Alright, so we have Diana Belbitsa versus Hannah Goldie. So Belbitsa, she has a 3 inch height advantage and a 7.5 inch reach advantage, which is quite significant. You know, that's that's quite uh, it's quite a lot. It's quite significant for this weight class. Um, you don't generally see that those type of advantages uh, in the length department. Alright, so we'll break down the strike into these two. So, break down Goldie first. So, you know, quite easy to break down in my opinion. So, she's generally fighting off the back foot. She likes to back up, back up, you know, stay on her bike. And then we'll just kind of stop on a dime. Wait for the opponent to walk in. And then she looks for her offense from there. And it's generally the same combination. It's either a 2-3 or a 3-2. Uh, sometimes she'll just throw the, the check left hook. Uh, but that's generally what she's looking for when her opponent's a closer distance. And uh, she doesn't take her head off the set of line, like at all. Like, even when she's throwing, when she's not throwing, when she's trying to defend, you know. Um, and Belle beats her, you know. She throws with intent. She, she throws the 1-2 the counter two, you know, flurry of one twos, you know, that's primarily her offense, but, you know, she throws with intent, uh, and Goldie, she kind of lets opponents kind of range bully her a little bit, and what I mean by that is that she fights at, like, kickboxing range, which is obviously beneficial to her opponents, who generally have the reach and the height advantage, like, over her, um, she likes to kind of skirt around the octagon, uh, through that lead leg inside low kick, you know, kind of telegraphs her side kicks as well when she's trying to throw those, you know, she's heavy on the back leg, she'll square her hips a little bit, and then, you know, you can expect a side kick or something from the lead leg, uh, so that's, you know, I, th I just think it's very easy to, um, to game plan around her, but, you know, at this weight class, at this level, the, uh, you know, fighters don't generally come in with 200 IQ game plans, uh, but yeah, how these guys win fights, so for Goldie, she's got good output, how these guys lose fights, so for Belbitsa, she has poor takedown defense at her ground game, needs serious work, like getting subbed by Lipsky, and getting dominated on the ground by Molly McCann, is not a good look, uh, so yeah, for Hannah Goldie, it's the strike and tendencies, we've already discussed that, past the victory for these two, for Belbitsa, heavy forward pressure, look to overwhelm her with punches, and for Hannah Goldie, sit down on the 2-3 or the 3-2 when Belbitsa does close distance. I think it's important to get the respect early or she's just going to walk you down and, you know, put punches in your face. Also look to mix in takedowns. And for Belbitsa, look to catch one of Goldie's kicks and work on a takedown yourself. Look to control her against the fence. I've seen in previous fights Goldie has been, you know, controlled against the fence quite easily by previous opponents. So how I see the fight going, so yeah, I'm not going to front, I didn't look too deeply into this one. I think it's going to be competitive, it's it's probably going to be a low level women's MMA striking match, and I've said this a bunch of times in the channel, you know, both are probably not going to have much discernible power. Activity is generally the same, you know, even recently, like Jessica I, uh, what's her name, Jessica I, uh, Jennifer Meyer, Viviani Arujal versus uh, Chikagian, Joanna Calderwood versus uh, Lauren Murphy, you know, these guys, they go, it's just 50-50 basically every time, you know, it's, um, it's, it's typically prudent to take the dog in this spot, uh, but yeah, like, the judges don't really know what they're looking at, it's, it's, it's very hard to pick a winner sometimes in these type of matchups, uh, but I do think Bobita is going to be the more aggressive party, I think she's going to be the one coming forward, and I think that's good optics, you know, uh, at this level of MMA. Uh, Goldie is returning after two years. Uh, it doesn't feel like it. I thought that Granger fight was like last year. It didn't didn't seem like two years ago. Um, so if anyone knows why she was out for two years, then you know post that in the comments. But there's a potential that she looks like a completely new fighter, like after two years at after only having six fights, two years out, you know, potentially looks totally different. Belbitsa has a 7.5 inch reach advantage, as I said before, which is absolutely absurd at this weight class. Uh, Goldie has some really short arms for her height. Like, if anyone knows what an ape index is, she probably has one of the worst ape indexes I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, I just think Belbitsa is more aggressive. You know, she might not be the cleanest striker, but I think her aggression and her forward movement will help her sway the judges in this one. Uh, Goldie, she does take the back foot without even being pressured by her opponent, and she's likely going to be on her bike for this one. I think, uh, is going to be the one on the front foot. Uh, she even let 
like uh, Miranda Granger use her length, so I wouldn't be surprised if she just lets Bell Beats just kind of bully her from kickboxing range. Like, if your arms are that short and you're undersized for the division, you got to go forward and you got to get in the pocket. You can't be on your bike and you can't be fighting at kickboxing range. It's just not... It's just not the game plan. Um, but yeah. Bell Beats, are actually, she's a fun fighter to watch, you know. Like, after this breakdown, go watch Diana Bell Beats versus Anna Maria Pal. Like, that was one of my favourite fights I've ever watched on tape. <laughs> and... Like, Anna Maria, she was swinging, she was swinging hooks, doing 180s and shit, like, after swinging so hard, um, there was no glove touch, fence grabs, grabbing shorts, you know, everything, it had everything, it was, it was a chess match, it definitely was, it was super high level, um, but yeah, that was one of the favourite fights I've ever watched, you know, doing tape. Uh, someone let me know if, if Goldie's ever gone for takedowns, because I've only ever watched her UFC Dana White's Contender Series fights, so I, I didn't want to watch her, you know, pre-UFC fights, I, I just wasn't interested in it, uh, but let me know if she's attempted any takedowns, because Bell Beats, is, her ground game is horrendous, so it, it's definitely a path to victory if she has it in her back pocket, but she seems like, she seems just like a striker to me, she doesn't seem to go for takedowns at all, so yeah, it is what it is, but uh, yeah, we'll have a look at the betting lines. Alrighty, so if you guys could like the video and subscribe, that'd be fantastic. Prediction is Bell Beats her by decision. Um, yeah, I think it's basically a pick em. It seems to be heading in that direction. Um, bets I'm looking at, you know, depends how much of a degenerate you are. Like, it's super, super low level women's MMA. Anything can happen, really. Um, but I certainly am a degenerate. So I'm going to be betting Bell Beats her probably at anything above $2.30 or plus 130 just the dog. If if Goldie was the dog, I'd bet her. But yeah, I um, it, it'd just be the dog is who I'd bet anyway. Uh, but that's the prediction.